Hi, some people like guns. However, others prefer a different type of entertainment. Since I have a ton of gun-related tutorials on my channel already and none for the more child-friendly visual effects, in this exciting visual effects tutorial I will show you how to create great-looking fairy glitter in Adobe After Effects. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why we didn't cut straight to the tutorial or why I'm holding this extremely girly magic wand. Well, since it is what it is, I may as well tell you that this is going to be a low intermediate tutorial and you should at least have a basic understanding of how to use Adobe After Effects. If you don't, I recommend that you go and check out my beginner tutorial series for After Effects first. Quite frankly though, as long as you have a bit of tenacity, you should be able to follow along with this tutorial even if you haven't used the tool before. But now, can we please cut to the tutorial? Seriously, you want me to use the wand? I'm not getting paid nearly enough for this. Here we are in Adobe After Effects and the clip we will be using for this tutorial is the clip of Walter running around like an overly excited little fairy. As always, if you do want to follow along with this tutorial, I am going to put a download link to this clip in the description of the video. In order to add fairy glitter into the scene, we are going to add a particle effect. For that, go into your layer window, right click and create a new solid. I am going to call this one glitter. Make sure the color of this layer is set to black and then hit OK. Go over into your effects and presets panel and search for the CC particle world effect. Now personally, whenever I work with particles, I prefer to use the Trapcode particular plugin, which is a great particle system that has a lot more controls than CC particle world, but it's a third party plugin that costs additional money on top of After Effects. So for this tutorial, we are going to stick with the CC particle world effect. Drag and drop the CC Particle World effect onto your glitter layer. And if you now scrub through your timeline, you should see a whole bunch of particles being emitted in the center of the scene. In order to see a little bit clearer what is going on in our scene, I'm going to go over into the effect settings for the CC Particle World effect and just reduce the birth rate to maybe 0.5, just so that I can see the actual scene in my preview window. The next thing we have to do is we have to make the particle emitter follow the wand that Walter is carrying around. Of course, you could motion track the movement of the wand and attach the emitter to it, but just to keep things really simple for this tutorial, we are simply going to manually animate the position of the emitter. In order to do that, let's go to a frame where we can see the wand fairly clearly in Walter's hand. Go over into the CC Particle World effect and expand the producer settings. And under the producer settings, click on the stopwatch icon for position X and position Y. Now simply click on the particle producer I'm not sure you can see this, let me quickly disable the video layer just for a second. There's a little circle here where the particles are being emitted. Simply drag this particle emitter to the end of Walter's wand. If you select the glitter layer and press U on your keyboard to reveal all of the keyframes, you are going to see that there are two keyframes created for the position X and the position Y property of the CC particle world effect. Obviously right now the producer just stays in one spot, so what we have to do is we really just have to step through this video. If you can't see the producer handle anymore, make sure you select your particle world effect and reposition the particle emitter right at the end of Walter's wand. When Walter runs out of the scene, make sure you keep animating the particle producer so it follows him off screen. As I step through this, I'm simply using the page up and page down keys to keep scrolling through my footage. And I'm going to wait until Walter comes back into the shot and then reposition the particle producer back on the staff. Let's go back a little bit just so that this follows along with Walter's staff correctly. And keep stepping through this. I am going to speed this up a little bit just so you don't get bored out of your skull. Make sure though that in the moment when Walter moves and there's a lot more movement with the wand, make sure you place a keyframe on almost every frame just so that the particle producer follows along with the wand correctly. Also make sure that you are actually repositioning the particle producer and you're not accidentally dragging the entire layer around, otherwise your entire particle effect is going to be really weirdly offset. Now 
And again, because Walter is moving the staff rather quickly in these few frames, I am going to place a keyframe on every single one of them. And once again, continue following with the animation until Walter is all the way out of the frame and the particle producer is way off screen. Let's scrub through this. And this is actually not looking too bad. Now let's fix up the beginning of the clip. Again, remember to reselect your CC particle world effect and keep repositioning that producer. Let's play this back and check it out. Cool, that actually looks pretty good. Next, let's start turning these really weird looking particles into really cool looking fairy glitter. Go back to your project window and let's create a new composition. I am going to call this one Particle Comp. I am going to set this composition to a square 200 by 200 pixels because I just want to create a small composition that will contain the image that we are going to apply onto all of our particles. Hit OK. Cool, there it is. Next, let's create a star. And again, you can really create any type of particle look that you want here. For fairy glitter, you probably want to go with a star though. In order to create a star, simply go up to your toolbar and there, if you can't see the star shape tool, it actually sits under the rectangle tool. So just click and hold on that and then you can select the star tool. In order to create a star, simply click and drag and you will create a new little star. Before you let go, however, there are a few options that let you customize the look of the star. One is while your mouse button is still depressed, simply spin your mouse wheel up or down and you can add or remove spikes from your star. Personally, for classic looking fairy glitter, I prefer to go with a four cornered star. The other thing you can do is right now the star is a little fat. So what I want to do is I want to scale it down a little bit, hold down control and then drag out and I'm going to make this star nice and skinny. I'm going to make sure it's very upright as well. Let go. Let's reposition the star right in the center. For that, you can also just go to the align panel and click the center vertical and center horizontal buttons. Next, and this might not always be the case because we are going to add a little bit of flicker, a little bit of you know glimmer to these stars and we are going to scale them up and down for that. Make sure that the anchor position for the star is centered right in the middle. If that is not the case, you will have to come up here and use the anchor tool to reposition this anchor right in the center of the star. Otherwise, this is not going to work very well. Let's zoom back out. Looks quite nice, but it's really flat. It just looks a little bit boring. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of a gradient. So the star is brighter in the middle and then kind of dims out towards the edges. For that, I'm going to search for my gradient ramp. There it is under the generate options and drag it onto my shape layer. I am also going to rename my shape layer to star. I mean, it's pretty obviously from what it looks like, but you know, I like naming things properly. Then go over into the gradient ramp effect options and change the ramp shape from linear ramp to radial ramp. There are two positions for the radial ramp. One is the center point that you can drag around. So let's place the center point right in the middle of the star. And the other one is the outer radius. So let's drag this out a little bit. Obviously right now the center is darker than the edges, which is not what we want. So let's change the start color from black to white and the end color from white to black. And now you have a nice gradient on your star and it'll just look a little bit more interesting when we create the glitter. Due to the limitations of the inbuilt CC particle world effect, we can't actually add the glimmer or the glitter to these particles in the particle system itself. However, we can kind of fake it with a little bit of a cheat. Select your star layer and press S to reveal the scale property. We are essentially going to randomly animate the scale to kind of go up and down a little bit just so that the stars appear to be flickering a little. For that, we are going to apply a simple expression. Hang on, it's not going to be too bad. Simply alt click onto the stopwatch icon next to the scale. You are going to get a little text editor, which is your expression editor. And I have a separate tutorial on expressions. If you want to learn more about all the cool stuff you can do with this. In this text editor, simply type wiggle, open bracket, 15, 40, close bracket. And then simply click somewhere outside of the text editor. What this will do if you now scrub through your composition, this will randomly kind of increase or decrease the scale of the star and make it appear like it's flickering. Hmm, I think the star is still a little bit fat, so I'm going to quickly expand my star layer, expand the contents, then go into the poly star one, expand the poly star path one, and I'm going to lower my inner radius just to make my star look a little bit more dainty, just a little more delicate. Cool, I think this looks actually quite good. 
let's return to our tutorial composition and let's apply this star shape to all of our particles. In your project panel you should now find the particle comp that we've just created and now simply drag and drop this particle comp down in your composition. It doesn't matter where, we're simply going to disable the visibility on this composition anyways. But now reselect your glitter layer which contains the CC particle world effect, go into your effect controls and into the CC particle world effect settings and expand the particle tab. Change the particle type from line over to textured square. All of your particles has vanished. Boo! That's not what we wanted, but it's also because we haven't assigned a texture just yet. In the particle settings, expand the texture option and now under texture layer, select your particle comp. There they are, a bit faint, a bit small, but we're going to fix that in a minute. The other important thing is that under texture, under texture time, you are going to select from start. So this is actually going to play the entire star animation, including all of the flicker that we added, throughout the life of the particles. Scroll down a little bit in the effect settings and let's ramp up the birth size so the stars appear nice and big at first. And let's set the death size to zero. This will make the glitter emerge from the wand fairly big and then it shrinks as it disappears. Personally, I like to jack up the size variation a bit just so they're not as uniform. Obviously, feel free to change this any way you want. Let's expand the opacity map and here you can actually paint the opacity of the particles over their lifespan. So right now they're kind of fading in and they're fading out. I might actually have them fade in a little bit quicker so I'm going to kind of just paint in here just a little bit sharper upwards at the beginning so they're born a little bit brighter and then they kind of slowly fade off towards the end. Right now all particles are being born with a yellow tint and by the time they reach their end they will have a red tint. Let's change this over to a fairly desaturated yellow. I just want something that looks a little bit more like fairy glitter. Obviously we could make this pink to match Walter's staff or blue or whatever other color you like. And you can always come back to this and change this later. Finally, let's change the transfer mode from composite over to add. And it still doesn't quite look like glitter. So what we also have to do is on the glitter layer itself, we have to change the blend mode from normal over to add. So this looks a little bit more like glitter already. Let's scrub through our composition and check this out. Cool, we're getting there. This is starting to look a little bit more like fairy glitter. Now that we've sorted out the way the particles look, let's deal with the physics and the way the particles actually behave. In the effect settings for the CC particle world effect, scroll back to the top and expand the physics tab. First and foremost, let's change the animation from explosive over to viscose. This is going to emit the particles much more gently. Now let's go up and jack the birth rate up again because we can see much better what's happening with the particles if this is a bit higher, so maybe around two, two and a half, depending on how many glitter particles you want. So that actually looks quite cool. The particle emitter itself is probably still a little bit too big. We can simply bring this down by reducing the radius X, Y and Z options under the producer. So let's shrink this down just a little bit to match the particle emitter size a little bit more onto the one size. Cool, that looks good. Next, the particles fall down way too quickly. They seem really heavy and I imagine fairy glitter to kind of just float and glitter off in the air. So for that, let's go back into the effect settings and let's reduce the gravity. Maybe 0.1 should be enough. So that is kind of falling really, really gently, almost too fast still. So maybe let's make this 0.05. I really just want them to flow down fairly gently. Also, they're kind of being sprayed off into all directions at the moment, which is because they have quite a bit of velocity as they emerge from this emitter. So let's bring this down to maybe 0.3. And let's rewind and play this back. Cool, this is much more fairy glitter like. I really like how this is starting to look. I do feel that my stars start out a little bit too big, so I'm going to go down again in the effect settings and decrease the birth size to maybe 0.5. Obviously, play around with this until it looks the way you want. And I'm also going to go back up and I'm going to increase the longevity just past the second a little bit. I think they vanish a little bit too quickly. So maybe make this 1.5 so Walter's really trailing a whole bunch of fairy glitter behind him, which looks kind of cool. Sweet, the last thing I want to do with the physics is I want to give the particles a little bit of motion from the movement of the wand itself so that when Walter swings the staff at the picture here, the particles kind of float a little bit in this direction just because it, it feels a little bit more, well, in quotation marks, realistic if the particles get a little bit of the momentum from the wand that Walter is waving around. 
The option for that is called inherit velocity. So let's jack this up to maybe around five. I don't wanna go too far. So as Walter is running, you can see the particles have a little bit of the momentum from the wand or from the movement of the particle emitter transferred onto them. Let's check this out. Cool, can you see how the particles are starting to fall in the direction that Walter was waving the wand? Let's rewind a little bit, click out of the layer just so we can get rid of all of these overlays and let's play this back. Cool, I really like how this is looking. If you do want the flickering of your glitter particles to be a little bit more pronounced, you can come back into your particle comp, select the star layer, and press U to collapse all of the properties, press S to reveal the scale again, expand the scale and you can obviously jack this up. The second value is the amount by which you are going to alter the scale. So you can potentially jack this up to 60 and your star will flicker a whole lot more. You can also select the star, press T, and in the opacity, again, we can do the same thing. You can alt click onto the stopwatch icon for the opacity. And let's enter something like wiggle 10, maybe 50. So this is going to randomly alter the opacity of the star by up to 50%. So this is going to just add a little bit more of a flicker to it. And if we now return to our composition, go back and play this back. Can you notice there's quite a lot more flicker in the stars now? Actually looks kind of cool. I do like this one. So almost there. The very last thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of glow to my glitter. And in order to do that, let's select the glitter layer, go back into the effects and presets panel and search for the glow effect. You will find the glow effect under the stylized tab. And let's drag the glow effect onto the glitter. Let's zoom in a little bit. Obviously this is a little bit too strong. So I'm going to go into the effect settings for my glow effect. And let's jack up the glow threshold. I really just want the very brightest parts of all of this glitter to glow. I will also increase the glow radius just to soften out this glow a little bit. And maybe I'll jack up the intensity just a little. Let's zoom back out. Hmm, it's, it's not really all that visible. Maybe I'll bring the glow threshold down a little bit and adjust the glow radius and the intensity. Again, just tweak this to your liking. Cool, I think this actually looks pretty good. Now all that is left to do is rewind your composition and play back your final fairy glitter effect. And that's all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, especially since this one was a little bit different to my usual content. As always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. If you did enjoy this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. And if you do want to see more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials, don't forget to go to youtube.com slash studio and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.